It's time to talk about games. Kingdom Hearts 3 is out and Mitch missed playing Anthem from playing the Disney characters too much. The Resident Evil 2 remake also stole Jason's heart and ate it. I'm Tim. I'm Mitch. I'm Jason. And away we go. So yeah, Kingdom Hearts. Um, I'm going to say a couple things that are non-spoiler. Spoiler, spoiler, no spoilers. Um, if you've ever played the other games and you go into this one, you're going to be wowed. The graphics are fucking fantastic. Like, really good. What do you think, Mitch? I think it's funny that you say that because uh, I also think that the graphics are really, really good. Um, I didn't play the other ones. But I was watching um, gameplay vid- footage, and uh, specifically one of the one of the Twitch guys that I follow was playing through the remastered versions um, before three came out, and I was watching him. And I can I can definitely tell that that was an older game, even than the remastered. The remastered looked good, but it was still an older game, and like this one looked really fucking good. But it's. I find it hilarious because I, f- I feel like I saw a bunch of articles that were giving it a lot of shit. Really? Yeah. Um, so here's what impressed me. Their mastery of Unreal 4. This game runs like butter on my, my standard PS4. Um, I left it on standard mode the entire time, and I never, I rarely had frame drops. Rarely. The game ran super smooth. Yeah, so it's it's that was the part that I was reading about that people were complaining about. Um, They were saying that it runs best on the Xbox One X and then the PS4 Pro, then the PS4, and then the Xbox One. Um, And each one, the the, uh, graphics downgrade just a little bit. It starts off at, um, I think, 2K, uh, 2560 by 1440 on the PS4 Pro or Xbox One X, and then it downgrades a little bit on the PS4 Pro, downgrades a little bit more, and then on the Xbox, it gets all the way down to like 720p. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, they're speculating they're doing that so that they could keep the frame rates up, but the frame rates also weren't uh, for, with people's testing, they weren't st- sticking out the 60 frames or anything. Um, I think the PS4 was like 50 ish on average during the tests, yeah. Maybe so, I have a crappy TV because I didn't notice because I don't really have a high end television. I mean, I all. didn't notice it either. Like yeah. I, I saw uh, the only graphical things that I saw wrong were uh, some of the characters' hair when they had like really spiky and like out there hair. Uh, the ends would get a little frayed, but like I didn't see, I didn't have stuttering, I didn't have frame drops i didn't have anything like that when i was playing it so I, it surprised me when i read those articles so this is also not a spoiler because if you've watched any trailers you know all the disney worlds they go to but what was your favorite world uh ooh, it's a toss-up between uh arendelle and uh toy box see minor opposite i couldn't stand arendelle i i was just wanting to, i wanted to get out of frozen like frozen bores me for some reason i don't know why oh really i loved it <laughs> uh, my two favorites were pirates of the caribbean which was awesome and um the big hero six world san francisco oh god that one was really good too yeah i re- i don't know man like, i liked all of them the only one that i was like eh about was uh olympus like it was good but it yeah. was also like it was kind of the intro level i didn't spend a whole lot of time there and uh Oh, and the and Twilight Town. I think that was that's my least favorite. Out of well, all Twilight of them. Town was from the other games. They had to bring that back. Gotcha. So, like in the first games, the first game, and then, then Chain of Memories had a town called Traverse Town, and I think they brought that back in Dream Drop Dream Dream Drop Distance. Excuse me. Um, where it's like people who lost their world that that didn't become heartless and had nowhere to go, so they went to Traverse Town, and then Twilight Town was in two. And so they, they brought that back for like, because there's characters that had to have resolutions there, I guess. Because mm. isn't that where Sora uh, originally met Mickey and Donald or Donald and Goofy was that's in Traverse Town? That's Traverse Town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was also interesting kind of what they did with uh, the story plot lines. Cause like without, without giving too much away, um, some of the world's stories lined up with the movies, but some of them were like, Oh, this is, this happened after the movie. Yeah. So previously, um, in the older games, and this is one thing that some people were pissed off about, I think, um, this might be spoiler. So don't listen right now, I guess, but this isn't really a big spoiler, but in the first couple games, each world you went to was like the base, like movie you knew it from. And then when, and then you have a section where you returned, which would either be a, an original story or an extent, like an, ex- a different one. Like for example, in kingdom hearts one, they did the original Aladdin and in kingdom hearts two, they did return of Jafar. But then they had a section where they came back later for an original story. In this one, every world just has one story. So some worlds are the movie that they came from, and some are a continuation of the movie because that's how that used to be in the other games, if that makes sense. But instead of having you go back to each world, they just split it up, I guess. Okay, Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's my interpretation of that. Um, But uh, I thought it was – I think – What's interesting, and Tim can comment on this, so the secret movie, uh, is this is not a spoiler, I, it has nothing to do with the story. So in the game, when you go to Toy Story Land, there is a preview for a game called Verum Rex. And this is where you can come in, Tim. The characters look like all the Final Fantasy XV characters. Like all of them. Oh, um, and if people don't know, is that Tetsuya Nomura, the director of Kingdom Hearts, was the original director for Final Fantasy Versus 13, which eventually became 15. And he was not very. Uh, it's it's speculated, hardcore, that he is he was not being was not happy about being taken off that project. And a lot of people don't know this too. The story for 15 had to change a lot compared to what Final Fantasy Versus 13 was going to be. Like 15 was dark, but thir- Versus 13 was a lot darker. So they took a lot of his characters and then they brightened up the atmosphere a bit. Well, the Verum Rex trailer in the game, it pretends to be a video game made by Square Enix. From from the secret ending, turns out that it Nomura might be trying to make that might try to be making verses in his own universe without having the Final Fantasy label. So it's like a Final Fantasy game without being a Final Fantasy game? Yeah, he's like, well, he's think of it this way. He's taking his original idea having similar looking characters but he's just like okay well i'll just uh, i'll have the the same plot point that i wanted and the same atmosphere that i wanted but i'll make original characters and i'll put it in my own universe and i'll combine my universes like a marvel cinematic universe because in the secret ending too it's heavily hinted that um there's gonna be a crossover event with his other game series the world ends with you so like the secret ending movie isn't really a secret. It's 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 very like if you if you saw that that video, you have no idea what was going on unless you knew about Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen and the world that was with you. Interesting. And it's almost like he's advertising that he's going to try to do his own little cinematic video game universe among these three properties. Definitely sounds like that could be very interesting. Because what other, where are all the other games that he's been involved in? So he's been mostly a character designer. So he has been a character designer for Final Fantasy from Final Fantasy VI on. And in Final Fantasy VI, he only designed like two characters, one of them being Shadow. And then from and from seven on, he was the main character designer. So he is solely responsible of how Cloud Strife looks and the entire cast and Squall and Titus and all of them. Uh, he, I don't think he was a character designer for 12 because they brought in their own person there. But 13, 15... Um, all the Kingdom Hearts games, Par- Parasite Eve. Oh wow! Yeah, so he's essentially essentially responsible for just like the look that Final Fantasy has had throughout the years, right? And his only directorial projects were the Kingdom Hearts games and The World Ends with You. And then he was given Versus Thirteen. So back, so if you got unless you're like a super duper Final Fantasy fan like I am, a lot of people don't know this. When Final Fantasy Thirteen first got announced, it got uh, it got announced with three games: Final Fantasy Thirteen, Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen, and Final Fantasy Agiato Thirteen. 
uh, Giato became a different game. Uh, I think it's uh, Type Zero. It's called Final Fantasy Type Zero, and Versus became Final Fantasy Fifteen. And each game is not what they originally were presented as, if that makes sense. And so he was supposed to be the one directing Versus Thirteen, and he did for a very long time until Tabata took over when they announced Final Fantasy Fifteen or Versus Thirteen was becoming Fifteen. If that doesn't sound confusing, yeah. I mean, it's a little confusing, <laughs> but uh, it's sort of it's sort of interesting. Cause I'd be curious. I'm curious, like how much, like definitely 15 had dark moments, but like it had kind of a, like a lighthearted, like they even say right at the beginning, like it's a Final Fantasy game for everybody. Yeah, like it kind of like tries to draw in a different crowd. And overall, I think they were pretty successful with that, weren't they? Well, yeah, but so I, I liked Final Fantasy 15, but it was not what it was originally advertised to be. So I'll tell you what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be more of like a crime story. So like Noctis's family, the Kalims, were actually like crime lords. They were all supposed to be like Yakuza types. And um, the uh, the story had a main character called Stella, which was eventually changed to be Luna. And Stella and Luna are completely opposites of each other. So Stella was supposed to be the daughter of a rival gang and the villain for Noctis, but also the love interest. So like that scene in uh, Kingsglaive where uh, King Regis's court is in there, but the Empire's in there, and then they all pull off their weapons, that was advertised in Versus, and that was, in my interpretation from what I remember back then, that was supposed to be two gangs fighting each for each other. Now, the one thing that was consistent is that the the kingdom of Lu- uh, the kingdom of Lucius still held the crystal, and it was the last place on Earth that had it. But it was going to be it, it was going to be a, a more like a Noctis versus Stella thing. So, if you go back and you watch the Verum Rex trailer in in uh, Kingdom Hearts, there is a character in there that is basically Stella reincarnated. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of fans are mad about that. There is a petition. That people don't even know, and it keeps getting signatures that Square should make versus 13 anyway, the way it was supposed to be. And it's also like the cast was also very Shakespearean, too. Like, I think I believe it it pulled a lot from like, I mean, it sounds like Romeo and Juliet to me. Yeah, it was supposed to be that way. So, so like, do those petitions ever work? Has that been a thing? Maybe not in the sense that Final Fantasy versus 13 will become a thing, but. Maybe that showed that to Nomura that there was enough support that he could pitch his own game like that outside of the Final Fantasy brand. I mean, I guess I it's it's a it's one thing to say, oh my god, like that would be cool, and you sign the petition versus like someone willing to shell out sixty bucks when the game releases, right? Yeah, might be. I don't know. I that's sort of, I always think that's that's sort of interesting. Like, oh, everyone's so outraged. That this thing didn't happen. It's like, well, it'll be it'll be cool. Like, what if he if he releases a game, it's like super neat, and everyone likes it. That could be cool. I mean, if it's something that's very similar to like the Final Fantasy genre, I'll probably play it. Yeah, and mind you, like I'm I'm speaking like this is a is a finality. This is a lot of speculation among people based on the direction of what the secret movie was doing and the direction of the trailer. So basically, like the in like I'll I'll kind of spoil this real quick. When you go to Toy Story Land, it starts off with a video game trailer, and this video game trailer is this trailer that looks just like Final Fantasy XV with its characters, with more flashier weapons and the same kind of design. And in the the part of the story story world is that Sora looks like the video game character. the The secret movie does not really spoil in the ending. It just shows that that video game character is real. Interesting. So the the Verum Rex world exists. So people are speculating that Verum Rex could be its own game, or it could be a continuation onto something else. I will say this: um, as far as that trailer is concerned, when you go into Toy Box World, that that trailer and the way they presented it was done so well. I was sitting there, I was playing the game, right? Because and Toy Box is like the the second world you go to. Yeah. Right. So I'm I'm playing and I'm like, okay, and, and so I leave and I go to Toy Box and I think I I got there and then I had to stop. And so I turned uh I turned off my console. I came back a couple hours later, I turned it back on and I loaded up the game and I said play again or whatever and it goes through the loading screen and then all of a sudden uh the trailer plays. 
And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, is this a new game? I'm like, I'm like, I mean, this game looks kind of cool, but are are they now advertising games within games? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this is I, stupid. That's awesome. <laughs> I think Nomura is making a pitch secretly. Oh, it was great. So there's some interesting history with him. So uh, did you know that he got announced to be the director of the Final Fantasy VII remake without them ever telling him he was going to be? They just announced it to the world before he even knew about it. He's like, oh, hey, I guess I have a job. Neat. <laughs> they would never. That's awesome. I don't think they would ever fire. He had, he had to leave the company. Like He's their last swan song. He's, he's one of the, the very few that still won the old guard from when Sakaguchi still ran the company. Like they have him and Katasi and a couple other uh, like like lower end guys, but most of the, the new the new people are all are, are new blood. So like they just like tossed his name on it without him even knowing. And there's other people that are speculating too. So like if you've ever played any of the other Kingdom Hearts games, you'd know that there are Final Fantasy characters in it. There's a, and they're pretty much they're pretty important to the story. Um, there are there are plot threads that will never be closed. And in Kingdom Hearts three, none of those characters are there. There's barely a there's barely a Final Fantasy reference. It's almost like he's salty about being taken out the project. That's sort of weird. Yeah. So when okay, so just for out of uh, curiosity of timeline, when was Final Fantasy versus thirteen supposed to be? When was that in the making, and when did he get taken off the project? So Final Fantasy versus thirteen got announced, I believe, in like. 2008 the same time that 13 got announced so the problem was is it apparently was in development hell so it, it was only like 25 percent done um and then as soon as they decided to because what happened was is there are speculating speculations that a lot of the team that was making versus 13 kept getting taken away to help make the 13 sequels 13 2 and 13 lightning returns and by the time that that had done, they had had only 25% of Versus 13 done that they're like, eh, let's just make it the next mainline Final Fantasy V title. And then at that point, he got taken off and then put on to Final Fantasy VII Remake. The same time that uh, 15 got announced, uh, right around the corner, they announced the FS7 Remake. So I wonder if, uh, like, I, I wonder when Kingdom Hearts 3 development originally started or plotting like started or whatever with it right to where i wonder if uh he had the final fantasy characters in kingdom hearts 3 but then when he got taken off he got salty and then had to go back and rewrite everything to take him out maybe because kingdom hearts 3 has been in concept for a long time like they showed off a concept trailer um back in like 2010 i i'm probably very wrong about that but it was pretty early and it was on, I believe it was on the Luminous engine or it was on the Crystal Tools engine or whatever the hell they call it. And the, I think it only took them like four years to make it when they decided to go on Unreal 4. So, and FS7 Remake will also be on Unreal 4, which I'm pretty excited for because the two games that I've seen that Square Enix have done on Unreal 4, it's Dragon Quest XI and um, Kingdom Hearts 3. They got a pretty good, they got a pretty good grasp on the engine. They, the games run like really well. Both of them do so nice that's exciting yeah and square's always been like if you go back and watch like the history of how final fantasy 14 like died and came back they talk about how like there is this barrel i like a like a, 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 a mesh asset that had so many polygons in it that it crashed the game because squaresoft at the time was so obsessed with, dra with graphics and their engines and always building their own proprietary engines and they actually and it took new blood to come in and change their minds in those things so like there's this infamous barrel that that was so like you would walk near it and your frames would start to drop dramatically. <laughs> Did the barrel look good at least? It looked like a really good barrel. Oh man, it looked nice and brown and it had lots of planks and it has like shimmering on it and like the metal like you can see the character's face in it. It looks so good. Yep. So the fact that they've been the infamous barrel. Yeah, they've been adopting different engines is and ones that are more clean and like tightly run i think is, is a good it's a good thing yeah I don't know. well do you think that the fact that they're using the unreal engine do you think that'll change the possibility of those games coming to pc like you make it make it happen sooner maybe 
I I hope so, but now my worry is is that since they're on Unreal Four, Epic is going to be like, we got money. You should make it exclusive to our launcher. Oh man, see, the only thing that because normally like I'm kind of on the same I'm kind of in the same opinion of Mitch where it's like I don't really care that it's on a different launcher, but the thing that is good about Steam is controller support. Steam yeah, has so, way better controller support than any of the other launchers. And if the game is a Epic exclusive, it's likely that it won't work in Steam very well, which means that it's like, uh, I can't use it on my Steam link. It's a whole thing. Yeah, and I'm one of those people that uses a PS4 controller on my PC and Steam already has those drivers set up. So that means I'm going to have to go get that jank ass software to use. I think it's called like PS4 Windows or Windows support or something and get that set up to use it on the Epic launcher because they don't have controller support. I've seen people use it as a as a as a negative for the Epic um store. I mean, it is a negative. So, in Kingdom Hearts 3, for example, yeah. is a controller game. <laughs> yeah, it's and I'm sure, you know, like the Final Fantasy 7 remake is certainly going to be a controller game like it's just you play those kind of games on controller. It's just how it works. They work better that way. Like uh, the FS7 remake two was originally announced to be on PS4 as a timed exclusive. I don't know if that's the case anymore, by the way, because I doubt you're going to see that in the PS4 before the next consoles come. So I could, I don't, I could see them just launching on all three platforms. Unless they're just going to make it a, a Sony exclusive because like with the speculation that they're doing with the ps5 is that they're saying that it's can be it's going to be backwards compatible with everything yeah so ps1 from from what i understand ps1 through ps4 backwards compatible um so if they continue to go through and and build it and you know they just don't get it done in time before the ps5 releases it's not a big deal if the ps5 can handle it yeah, like that would be so exciting if the PS if the PS5 is backwards compatible through all of the generations, like that would be a console I would actually buy on day one. Like that's amazing. Well, some people were so that patent is kind of vague because they filed a patent for that, right? Yeah, yeah. So there is one thing that's vague about that, and they don't know if it's like let's say I have so I have PS1 games over here. I've got like Saga Frontier two, I've got Final Fantasy seven, I've got Sukoden two, a couple other games. And nowhere in that patent patent says it's going to have a disk drive that's going to support that. So, like, some people are speculating, speculating like it'll let you download any game from their generations. Who knows? You know, I mean, that could be that could be true too. Yeah. I mean, it, they could make it to where they just stop doing discs for games, right? And yeah. like, because every sing, like every single game that you buy, you get it you even if you have the disc you throw it in your ps4 and it installs right and the only thing that you're limited to at that point is the fact that you need to have the disc in order to play it um but if they just got away from like they could go through and just not put a disc drive in uh and and just like take that space out throw uh an extra hard drive in there right so though now there's two hard drives in there to have even more space and uh and then kind of go through that way and yeah, I don't know. Ooh, and then you, and then you. There's an attachment they sell if you want a disc drive, right? Like Nintendo does. Yeah, actually. So just saying. So say that. A, say that attachment was a thing, right? But this is like me theory crafting and kind of like wishing. Like if you say you had your old PS One game, you bought the attachment for the disc, you put it in the attach. Put, put it into the attachment disc drive once, and it's like, oh yeah, you own that game, and it just lets you download it. I mean, that would be cool. I am going to say USB disk drives are a thing. So, like, that's not yeah. far-fetched. So, the only reason why I think that might not work is console fans like their physical media. And I'll give an example of what happened. Remember what happened with the X-Bone when it first came out? In their old patents, they were not going to have a disk drive at all. But instead, they they ended up doing the disk drive, but they had to do that, on, that always online DRM thing. Do you remember that? Yep. So like if I if I bought the game and I registered to my Xbox, then I couldn't then give it to Mitch to borrow and play. Yep, that was. When was that controversy though? Was that like two thousand twelve? I think two thousand twelve. Like yeah, seven years ago. Yeah, I think. 
like I just wonder because the other the other thing that I'm thinking like for these consoles that would be a really if they put got rid of the disk drive and then made it entirely entirely something you download or stream because that's becoming a bigger and bigger thing like they really push that the PS Plus subscription you know like that could be a big thing too like you just stream all of your games. You don't download them. Like, it's just a thing. I'm curious. You both use PS Now, right? I have. I don't currently have it. So, when you've used it, have you checked to see what your your bandwidth was that you've used? Because I'm, I'm one of the things that scares me about the streaming thing is that we have bandwidth caps now, at least here where we live and our, our providers. How much did that take up? Yeah, so the in my when i was i was doing testing on it because i remember you asking me about that so i did testing and it was about like it's about the equivalent to me like like just a little bit more than when you stream super high quality netflix movie all night for as long as you stream a netflix movie that's not too bad then i'd like to know what that is for like, I, I guess, I, and I haven't done any research on it, but uh, what is it? What is the actual bandwidth usage if you are streaming something at 1080p, right, for an hour? Uh, how much bandwidth does that use? Because then you have to think about, say, you have uh, 30 hours of gameplay, right? Is it going to cost you more data? to stream that game for 30 hours than it would have taken you to download the 50 gigabyte game. Hmm. Right. Well, because they also remember this though, for PS now they right now on the PS4, they support you downloading some of the games now, even if you don't own them, like downloading them instead of streaming them. So you can play offline. Is that, is that what yeah. that's for? Oh, good. Cause that's another yep. thing about streaming that irritates me and it's also another thing about the epic launcher that irritates me it's the epic launcher unless they patch it in does not let you play offline games yeah i find that i find that annoying um i know like for the ps now i think it's like you're it's just the same as like when you download a movie on your phone it's like it has to check in every certain amount of time for it to still work it like has an expiration on it or something like seven days or something like that crazy Okay, so here's where here's where you're going to have a problem, right? I'm just I'm just looking up streaming video uh, content. So if you are doing 4K streaming, right? Because we're we're getting into the realm right now where 4K is is the new 1080p. 4K is best K. 4K is best K for now until 8K becomes more standard, and then 16K and continue up the numbers as you will. But 4K is the new the new thing right that, that's what the ps4 put for uh plays at. that's what all every single tv out there that you're going to go buy is going to be a 4k tv that uses about uh for just video video well video and audio but not including any other data that it takes to transmit controls back and forth you're looking at about seven gigs an hour that's a lot of uh it's a lot not just a lot of bandwidth but that's a lot of traffic that you're going to require people's uh internet to to handle to be able to download seven gigs an hour and like if you have you know top of the line internet then sure but i think most people don't uh most people aren't in the area that they could even get it and uh i think that's what's going to keep people from using streaming video games as like the primary video game area yeah i i think you're right i think that's probably what's going to like at least for now, like even with that, even with that subscription, it's going to be important for them to have that downloadable option. I hope they bring that to the PC, honestly, but it would probably make the game run way smoother. Can you not stream? I thought you could stream to the PC right now. Yeah, no, you can stream to the PC, but you can't download it. Oh, oh yeah, no. Oh, and <laughs> like it would be cool if you could preload it and then it just has it. Well, you can. So you can stream content from your PlayStation to your PC uh, the same way that you can with the Xbox. But I will say that the Xbox version of that works way better than the PlayStation one. Interesting. I think they, I think the PlayStation limits you at 720p for the resolution. Like it, it doesn't it's not 
I didn't I didn't like it. I tried it. I didn't like it. I ended up just moving my PS4 into my office so that I could play because I didn't want to. I'm not, I wasn't going to stream this new beautiful Kingdom Hearts 3 Glory at 720p. I'm not doing that. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, so we're going to have we're going to have Final Fantasy 7 remake. It might be on the might be on the PlayStation 5. That'd be neat. Um, I mean, we got like they they've been doing a lot of remakes recently with like mis, mix mixed success. We were talking about last week the the Resident Evil games. That one was badass and is still badass. I'm still playing it. It's a perfect remake. So the the Resident Evil one, it's a like it's an actual remake, right? It's not like an HD no it's, remaster. It's a they had to redo everything. Character models, voice acting. Yep. It's awesome. And like rebuild all the levels and everything like that. Do the levels look the same? Yep. They're, they, I mean, except that you could see them in a 3D space. So like in the, the PS1 area, the camera was fixed. So, was, so like each little area, you can only see one view of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So like how good is the game? Really fucking right? good. Be- well, but so is it really good because it's a good game or is it really good because it's hitting that nostalgia factor? Like I never played Resident Evil 2. So would I still find it as a really good game because it's a remake or are you saying it's really good because you really enjoyed the original? It's really good. And I was really scared by Resident Evil 2. Would I still be scared? You guys are pussies. <laughs> no, um, maybe. I don't know your fear level. Like stuff does not scare me. Um Silent Hill is the dog that jumps out of the freaking filing cabinet. See, the jump scares don't bother me uh, because I think they're cheap. I think that's a yes. Maybe for you. God damn it. I think Silent Hill, for example, at least the first three games, not not beyond that, are scary because one, they have occult influence influences and two, they don't really they have some jump scares, but they're rare. But there'll be times where you'll be going down a dark hallway and it'll just have this. There won't be any music. You'll just have on, ominous ambience going on. And you, you think, oh, my God, at the end of this dark hallway, something's going to jump out me. And then you get there, nothing happens. And you oh, you were so scared because the buildup turned out to be nothing. That's the type of horror I like. The the, 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 mind, the mind fuck horror. Um, so jump scares, zombies, Freddy Krueger, all that shit. Nope, doesn't bother me. Never has, never will. But if you watch something like Blair Witch, which is, believe it or not, like cheesy, but if you can put yourself in that atmosphere, it's actually pretty fucking scary. So that stuff will scare me. Um, but I'm back to Resident Evil. Okay, so let me, I have, in order to tell you why this game is fun, I have to give you some history of the games. So Survival Horror, Survival Horror had, had clunky controls on purpose back in the day because you were supposed to have limited ammo limited healing and limited movement and everything in the world was trying to kill you so they have at the time they were called tank controls so basically your character would move like a tank and then you couldn't aim your gun like you could like at a shooter you just hit r1 characters would put their hands up and shoot the gun at the closest thing near them and be an auto aim so resident evil 4 was the first game to get rid of that but the problem with Resident Evil 4, and if you go back and play it versus playing the older games, it's more of an action game than it is a survival horror game. Not once did I, when I played that game did I ever feel like I was low on supplies or anything like that. Because, one, it's the first game where they actually off put a merchant in the game that you can buy shit from. So it, became, it went from survival horror to action. Five and six took that up to nine. Five five is an action game, hundred percent. It, it is a co op action game. It's not even scary. Six is also a co op action game with a crappy story. What Resident Evil Two Remake does well, it brings the shooting mechanics of I, I would say six because you can you can aim and you can move while you're shooting, but you move very slowly because you're because you're aiming your gun. At the same at the same time, keeping the survival horror elements. So ammo is really fucking scarce, and movement you can't roll. You can you can you can do a light sprint, but you're not going to be able to like run around the room like you're fucking god. So when a zombie shows up as the, the most the slowest zombie on the planet, 
it's a big deal not because they're they're threatening but because they're fucking tanks they take forever to die and a couple bites and you have limited ammo and you have limited ammo so what you have to do is make a decision you can sit there and you can unload the entire clip to, to kill the zombie permanently as it was in the older games but but now they've added a new mechanic to the game so in certain sections of the area there'll be windows and if you don't board those windows up, then every time you come back, zombies will respawn, thus giving you a harder time to to explore and finish puzzles and hopefully conserve your ammo. Because when you fight a boss, you need all the ammo. So it, the game is already making you think ahead. If you if you if you're if you've died a couple of times, like okay, I need to keep my ammo because I got to this boss and I got my ass kicked and I had to go back to an older save because I didn't have enough ammo because I unloaded on five zombies for no reason. So the game is making you strategize while still having modern combat mechanics. Oh, and they and they kept the they kept in there the the multiple save slots. Yep. And you can even turn on a hardcore mode if you want to go back to how it used to be, because in the original Resident Evil games, you had to have an ink ribbon to save. And oh, my God, that that mechanic right there is what made me turn the game off when I originally played it. So I was like. Because I'm such like a save scumming person in any in all of my games. I'm just like, oh, something scary. Save really quick. Just so, save really quick. Yeah. In the standard mode of the game, you can save as much as you want. It will still down rank your rank at the end. But if you're not if you're not a completionist, that's not a big deal. So in the old games, um, to get a, an S rank, you had to have very I think you know, were only allowed one or two saves. and You had to beat the game under seven hours or something like that. And I I beat the game under five hours. And the funny thing is, if you were to ask me about what the plot of Resident Evil 2 was or any of the level designs or any of the mechanics, I could probably name some of them. But I couldn't, I, I thought I forgot everything. And as soon as I got in this game, this brand new 3D remake, shit started to come back to me. Even when I was thinking about how it used to be on the old fixed camera PS1 game. So this is why I think it's better. And if you if you're that if you're like the gamer that likes walk up press A cutscene walk up press A cutscene you're not going to like this game because this game is is scarce on purpose and that's how all survival horror was and they did that with Resident Evil Seven so the Resident Evil Seven the Seven came back with the first person perspective this one has the third person it brought back monsters that can't die and limited ammo and all kinds of stuff and it was a huge success and somebody at Capcom was like oh I guess I guess people really did want this type of experience, not the action experience. Oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. So yeah, I think it's great. I've beaten it on Leon. And I'm doing Claire B. Um, I'm super happy with it. If FF7 remake turns out like this one, I will be a happy man. That'll be that'll be really hard for like that. Like getting doing an actual remake and making it sounds like they've made it feel like the original game, even though they've really. It's a remake. It's pretty impressive. The older titles still have things to teach us. One of the things I hate about since like the maybe the end of the PS2 and the Xbox PS3 era are the just the easy ass games that we get. Some games are just so ridiculously easy until you add you tack on three different modes to it. And there's a way to do difficulty and Dark Souls has, sh has shown us this that's built into the game. And one of them is is literally just sacrificing resources. Like this game would be easy if you, if ammo was plentiful. It'd be an easy ass game because it's not. It's not that easy. It's easier if you know where all the puzzles are too, because there are sections in this game too where you're being chased by a monster that literally will not die. In the first game, he kind of died, and he would drop an item. Um, and then he wouldn't show up until another trigger point happened. In this game, they'd remove that. And all it does is, like, if you, like, unload a clip on him and he then stumbles over, he's only stumbled over for 30 seconds. And then he gets back up and starts chasing you. Well, that's a big waste of ammo. Big waste of ammo. And I first saw that because I my the game subverted my expectations. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is easy. In the first game, you just unload a clip and stun him. And then he, he won't show up again until another trigger point happens. Nope. They changed it. They, they're like, nah, man. He's going to follow your ass and you have to do puzzles and all this other shit while avoiding this motherfucker. <laughs> that sounds terrifying. Sounds awesome. Like that, that reminds me of like the, uh, what's it called? The amnesia experience. Mm -hmm. Very, very similar. That game, that game was pretty cool.
Well, they had, they learned from Resident Evil Seven too, because Res- Resident Evil Seven had a a monster that would not die. And it was just it was purposefully to be a stalker monster. So they combine those elements where it's like some horror games don't let you fight the monsters. If the monsters get you, you're dead for good. Resident Evil 7 combined those by letting you kill some monsters, but one is un- undefeatable. It is, it'll stalk you until you're dead. Um, what a great game. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm still hyped up. I'm still playing it. I got to do Claire. I j- literally just started Claire's um, playthrough B. So it's awesome. Wow, what a great game. It is a really good game. Capcom's back. Resident Evil or uh, Devil May Cry 5 is coming, and if that doesn't suck, Capcom's back, baby. Bring me Dragon's Dogma 2, and we're good. Bring back Breath of Fire. Bring back Breath of Fire. Hey, you know what was not a great game? What? Fucking Anthem. Anthem sucked. What the hell was what the hell is up with that demo? I'm curious what Mitch thinks about it first before I start trashing it. Well, okay, so I uh, so last week I was really excited for the Anthem demo, right? And and so I spent my time. I'm like, okay, I, I pre-installed it. I got it up and ready. I'm going to, I'm going to play it. Right. And then, uh, and then at the same time I bought Kingdom Hearts three. Uh, and then I proceeded to spend all weekend playing Kingdom Hearts three with the intention of like, oh, well the Anthem demo is, is uh the first through the third right so like i'll just come home um i'll turn the super bowl on and like have that on a monitor and like play anthem while i'm halfway paying attention to the big game and turns out uh that the anthem demo ended at like 6 p.m eastern time on sunday so uh i got to play like five minutes of the game because of bad timing on my part and my only the only thing that i really noticed of of it uh was that the flying controls were really janky uh it, it wasn't easy to control my my mech suit thing whatever it's called when it, it was flying when it was running on the ground it was fine aiming and shooting was fine throwing grenades was fine like all the other controls were good but as soon as i got up in the air and i turned on those jet boosters and i started flying around that's when it became like oh i it was hard i couldn't i was flying around okay but like sometimes i just wouldn't be able to stop where i wanted to or make the turns that i wanted to it would i would move my mouse and it would just start moving a little bit too fast and i don't know it was it needs work I, i'll say that I definitely th- needs work is definitely part of it. I think so. Like in my opinion about the demo itself, like it, I definitely agree with the flying controls thing. That's is kind of like the flying controls are really shitty. Honestly, the flying controls are pretty similar to a lot of other flying controls in crappy like origin games. Like in uh, it's it's like the same flying controls that they had in like the Battlefield game. Battlefield Battlefield five like, hey, here here's a uh, you can try to fly in a plane like, oh, no, you can't fly a plane because it's hard because we don't know how to make flying controls work with a mouse. So my only uh, counter to that is that when you play Battlefield games and and I was doing this a lot when I played Battlefield three a lot. uh you don't you don't fly a plane with a uh, with a mouse. Well, that's true. You go and get a joystick and you grab the joystick when you get into the plane, right? Yep. So is that what they expect? They want us to go and grab the joystick for when we're flying this freaking thing? God, I hope not. You right? Like you have to fly all the time. Well, you don't have to, but they make it so that you can and and could utilize it, right? And like, well, the thing is, you you actually do have to because. A mission objectives are like are based off of the fact that you can fly so they're up on like ledges and shit like that and certain boss battles require you to fly to avoid yep. to avoid stuff so go over gameplay things i think one thing that bugged me the most so for me i have an issue with motion blur in games i hate motion blur i hate the way it looks it actually like makes me sick a lot of the times and for some freaking reason they have a setting inside the game that says turn motion blur off and it doesn't actually turn it off like you still have motion blur in the game so 
So I can confirm. I did. I tried to do the same thing. We were all playing together. Same thing happened to me. And I'm on a 1080 regular um, for the win um, from EVGA. And the motion blur was tanking my FPS like very badly. Even the first person mode where you're in a town was tanking my FPS really badly. Yeah. In fact, for me, the FP the FPS mode in the town was actually tanking my frame rates more than when you were actually in the game in the suit fighting. And what's interesting too about that, I I think I brought that up to you, is that you don't. I, as far as I did could could see, I didn't see one other player in that town. I don't know if you ever would, but if there were other players, it's supposed to be a hub location. That's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah. It's supposed to be like a bazaar, but yeah, you're just instance to one person. I don't know if that's just for the demo or if that's how they intended it to be. Who knows? But um, yeah, in term in terms of that, like I did, I will say for you, Jason, like we, when we started the when we when we started the game, we played we played one mission, and it actually makes a difference in I thought the enjoyment and kind of the kind of the difficulty like the default in the demo is to set everything to easy mode which mm. i actually think is a mistake for them to do because the gameplay is boring when it's set to easy mode when it's set to normal the dudes are at least a little bit challenging and like me and another friend were playing it and we were like we had a little bit of tough time on one of the bosses on the second mission that we ended up playing my uh, my issue wasn't really with how easy it was it was i one they like i said they ripped that that gameplay style straight from mass effect and drama i didn't like it in that game and i don't know if i like it in this game uh and two um i've noticed that it, people on console like this game a lot better than people on pc and i think the reason being is that awful ui that they have does not work for pc users at all and you don't have as much a problem with a controller you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, maybe I could I could definitely see that. I also like I also think the game like we I think we've been talking about it like it's a competitor for Destiny. I actually like when I'm playing it, the the gameplay actually reminds me more of the division than it does of Destiny. Like it remind like the way the game plays and like the way you shoot like the third person, the third person always and all that like it reminds me of the division. And um, like it has, and if you like the division, you might like this game. If you don't like the division, you definitely won't. I think I did not like the division, not at all. So if you're like me, don't play it. For one, I don't think it was a demo. I think it was a beta, and like they shouldn't have called it a demo. But since they did, here's my biggest problem with the game. So, I don't know when we decided that it was okay that when someone comes out with a demo, that the demo isn't just fun. Like, it's a demo. It's a, it's a demo for your game. If it's a demo, like, they're, they're supposed to be trying to sell me on going and buying the freaking game. So, like, first thing that happens, I load up Anthem... There's a NPC directly directly next to me. I turn. I'm like, oh, an NPC, cool. And I press the action button to talk to the NPC, and it's like, this NPC is not available in the demo. I'm like, what the fuck? It's the first person I see. So already bad experience there. And then the first thing that you have to do, there's like, oh yeah, there's this indicator, and it has a mission, and you're stuck in the main city where you run super slow, and there's no like, there's no bringing in bringing you into the game i remember playing demos from like the early 2000s where you'd load up the demo and the first thing that happens is like oh cool cutscene, something exciting happens here's some cool gameplay and it shows you like the core gameplay that you're gonna be doing in the game like it gets you right into the action because it's a demo and we're trying to sell something i don't know when when game studios lost that why is that not a thing anymore because it takes game studios uh, I think have a hard enough time developing and releasing their games on time without bugs and without glitches and without anything like that, that they don't have the time to go through and also make a demo. It's a good point. Because what, what you were saying there, right, like a demo is a different game. 
it it is it's built off the same structure but it is not the same game it is it starts you off somewhere different it has a different set of things to do and it's <laughs> a, it is specifically to as a teaser with like all these little different fun parts but it is its own separate game and game studios don't have time to do that right now i think that's a fair point maybe they should change the language because they did call it a demo yeah yeah well also like think about it just in terms of me opening that game for the first time because maybe this is just something for like how game studios oh how uh, games are being developed in terms of like the startup of a game at least in my opinion should be you're it's introducing you to the game and what's cool about the game so the very first thing that you should do in anthem like the the gameplay is the the shooting gameplay the flying around so like maybe it wouldn't be a hard hard time for them they wouldn't have to make a separate game if the very first part of the game was just something that was very similar to a demo i guess that exciting let's catch you i guess i just don't under i don't i don't understand where you're coming from and i don't necessarily agree with you because when i loaded in the game again i only played like five minutes but within the first 30 seconds of playing the game i was in my javelin and then i was already flying around and started a mission see that's so funny because it was like a good five minutes like i'm just like (laughs) where the hell am I? What is going on? What am I supposed to do? And I finally go and I'm like walking around super slow and I find the guy and talk to the guy and he's like, oh, go and do the thing. Like, oh, the javelin. I go over there and I try to and then then I'm trying to figure out how to like launch the javelin and like the UI is sort of unintuitive. I thought I'm like sitting here like, how do I what is what is going on with this? I don't know. Maybe maybe. Maybe the UI was made for Mitch's instead of for Tim's, but maybe. Uh, but I see. I did. I didn't do any of those things. I started looking at. Well, I, I always go into games to see how I can break it. And if you remember, I was. I had all kinds of problems. I had care. I had characters that were clipping inside of different objects. I had. I had soldiers that had their hands up in the air, like they were carrying guns. Like you could see that they had the trigger finger there with no guns. Um, I was criticizing like the facial. Um, animation and rigging that they did like i was looking at the the t- I, I like to ma- i like to mod my games i like to gut my games and look at them so when i play new games i look for those types of things and there are so many annoying things in that game for me that i will ever spend money on it like just st- I, they had the same rigging system for facial animation that mass effect andromeda uses and it sucked like even have you seen those videos mitch i have yeah they're horrible what are you talking about? They're great. They make for good memes. Oh, God. It's so lazy. I just don't understand. Like, and what will happen is Bioware fans will see that and think that's okay, right? Because Bioware has never really been good at rigging anything, but their storytelling was so good that you ignored it. And Mass Effect Andromeda did not have a good story in my mind. But this game, so far, the story that was presented to me did not grab me either, if that makes sense. Like it, it's the same for me with Destiny. Destiny story doesn't grab me at all, but I like playing the game with you guys because it's fun. And I definitely think that that game has way better shooting mechanics too. By the way, like I'll trash Destiny two because I really don't like the shooter looter shooter genre that much. But I will give it credit when I play one of its um, competitors. Destiny 2's gunplay feels a lot better. That's just my two cents. I will I will agree with that from the the little bit of shooting that I did do. Uh, it does that also needs work yeah it wasn't bad it wasn't like it definitely wasn't bad and it wasn't not playable but I did have uh, I I do enjoy Destiny more I also didn't never played Mass Effect Andromeda so I can't really compare it to that like I know what you're talking about with the, the facial riggings because of all the memes that have come up, but I don't know how the gameplay is. I don't know how uh, any of that carried over. So I like I can't really speak to that. I I think if you're I think if you're like really into this genre, um, not like you as in Mitch, but you listening, like I think if you are really in this genre and you're a console player, I think this is probably worth picking up. But I feel like the PC version of this is probably going to be the worst one. Out of all the all the platforms, I could probably see that actually. Yeah, um, I I could definitely see this being a lot more fun with a controller. I almost think that's why Apex just got launched from Respawn. They're like shit, they're like we need a we need a we need a really tight game that's made for PC players because PC players aren't going to want like it. They're not going to like Anthem at all. 
here you go. Here's a game. Yeah, talk about a, a silent uh, release. A silent release. Yeah. Yeah, so I would definitely say to wrap up Anthem. Like, if for me, uh, if you're going to compare it against Destiny, I would say Destiny Destiny Two is a better game. Like, I would just I would just play that game if you don't already own it. Just just buy that because that's like more like just a superior game. Um, now, uh, like Anthem did pique my interest enough to be like. Maybe this will be a uh, a year from now. Tim will go and see if it's on discount and see if the reviews say that it's gotten better. It piqued my interest enough for that. Not five out of five Tims. No, certainly not five out of five Tims. The demo, I would say, is like two out of five Tims with a hope that the future holds something better. Mine is a zero out of five Tims because I want Bioware to die. <laughs> All right, how would you rate your five minutes of gameplay, Mitch? Uh, I would say it was probably a three out of five. Uh, three out of five, whatever rating system that I haven't decided to use yet for Mitch because I don't want to use Tim and Jason's because those are your guys's, so I got to think of my own. Uh, three out of five. And um, and uh, I, I don't want Bioware to die. Uh, I think that they need to jump on the bandwagon and do a mass effect uh remake because oh. i know how much jason will love it i would fucking go. hate it <laughs> what if they only remade mass effect 3 uh it would feel cheap once you've made your mistake you've made your mistake there's nothing you can do to change it that's how i look at it like i didn't even i wasn't even just to just so people know, like I Mass Effect Three is what made me hate Bioware, but I was not part of the crowd that wanted a new ending. It, it was that was the ending to me. The the multicolored explosions <laughs> was the ending, not the the context they added or anything like that. If you're gonna make it that way, make it that way. I hate it when things are changed. I really do. Like I I I never wanted to make a new ending, but as a consumer, I wasn't gonna buy their games anymore. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Cause now it says to companies like, oh, and I guess I guess Bethesda is the first person to do this because they retconned the Fallout 3 ending where in the first game before the DLC came out in Fallout 3, at the end your character dies permanently. And then they changed that in a DLC because of the fan backlash. So I actually think that's stupid. Like make them die permanently was that your original goal make them die permanently it's fine um i can still criticize you for it hey don't do that in the next game maybe because video games are that are open world and ongoing forever it kind of sucks to have your character die right so don't do that in the next game and they didn't but um they came out and they kind of capitulated changed to, to keep their fan base and i guess that works too but i don't think it worked in their favor either because apparently mass effect and drama did not sell very well so whatever so I think we both can agree, maybe not Mitch, that Anthem is not handsome. Yeah. Not handsome? Yeah, like Handsome Jack. Like I was I was just wondering if you were going with Handsome Jack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm, I, I'm good I, with I that. Think, I think Borderlands 2, the handsome collection, is probably the best looter shooter ever in my mind. That's true. Aren't they coming out with another one this year too? We'll see. Yeah, probably, but it'll probably suck. <laughs> I mean, probably. Um, only time will tell I don't know maybe next week we'll talk about Battle Royale <laughs> that's true I and mean, then we gotta go check out this uh, this Apex game Apex game that decided to spring up on us with no warning it's free or it is free I do like that they have a, a founders edition that you can spend like 30 bucks for but I don't I don't even look at what it gives you I'm just gonna play the free version yep yep I mean sounds like a thing so tune in next week where we talk about Apex and stuff. Yeah. Goodbye. iTunes review. So like subscribe stuff. Oh my god. Press the bell. Hit the bell. And subscribe. iTunes review. TMJSyndrome.com. Okay, bye. <laughs>